Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Neuropathology. Today we're going to talk about a certain infection that can occur in the brain. But first, a few things. If you like this video, please click the like button at the base of the screen. In addition, this video is meant for medical education purposes only. It is not intended to be used for medical advice. If you or a loved one have a question or a comment, please talk to your doctor. All right, let's get started. So what we're looking at here is a very sad and unfortunate case of a baby who died prematurely. The reason why this baby died, we will find out shortly. So what we're looking at is the undersurface of this brain. Uh, this is the frontal lobe. Uh, this is the front of the brain with the frontal lobe. This is the back of the brain, the occipital lobe here. These are the temporal tips of the temporal lobe. This is the lateral sulcus here, otherwise known as the sylvian fissure. And we can see that there is the spinal cord here, which attaches to the brainstem here, and the cerebellum is surrounding that here. Okay, so now that we're oriented, um, as part of the examination and evaluation of a brain, we want to look at all aspects of the brain, so the inside and the outside. So what we do is first, we'll um, remove the inferior aspects of the uh, brain, which include the brain stem and the cerebellum, and in this case with the attached um, spinal cord. So we'll make a cut here and we'll remove these inferior um, structures. And so when we do that, uh, we'll take a look here. Um, and basically what I've done is um, taken off the brain stem. And so this is where I've made my cut. Again, here are the temporal lobes. The front of the brain is towards the top of the screen. The, the back of the brain is towards the bottom of the screen. Um, and this is a portion of the brainstem where it's been cut off. This is called the midbrain. We can see the cerebral peduncles here. Okay. And, uh, this, this, um, mesh of very thin membranous looking tissue with a lot of blood vessels. These are the leptomeninges here. Okay. Which cover the surface of the brain, which we can see here, um, that is artifactually um, exposed. So what we notice in this photograph is that the midbrain um, has this abnormal ring around the opening within the midbrain, which is uh, the sylvian, uh, the aqueduct of Sylvius. Okay. So this shouldn't be here, this ring of uh, yellow green um, material shouldn't be here. And then surrounding this area, you can see this um, uh, discoloration of the tissue here and also here, which is probably reacting to this um, membranous um, uh, tissue here. If we cut into the coronal section of the brain, if we cut into the brain and we make a coronal section, we can see that the brain is very, very abnormal. Um, and so just to be oriented, uh, here we have our temporal lobe, okay? temporal lobe here, um, and these are the lateral ventricles, which are the uh, usual openings in the brain, but in this case, it's very abnormal in that there is this fibrinopurulent exudate looking material lining the ventricles, okay? So this is the lateral ventricle here. On the right side and the lateral ventricle on the left side. These are the frontal horns of the lateral ventricles and the temporal horns of the lateral ventricles here and here. And then we also see a portion of the third ventricle here. 
And all of these ventricles are markedly abnormal in that they are lined by this fibrinopurulent exudate here and here, here and here. So again, the lateral ventricles, this is the temporal horn of the lateral ventricle, frontal horn of the lateral ventricle, and the third ventricle are all lined by this fibrinopurulent exudate. In addition, if we go more posterior towards the posterior surface, uh, towards the posterior aspect of the brain, we can again see that there's this fibrinopurulent exudate lining the ventricles here. And then we also see the, these are the choroid plexus here and the choroid plexus here, which makes the cerebrospinal fluid. The choroid plexus on, uh, in both the right lateral ventricle and the left lateral ventricle, they are both encased in this fibrinopurulent exudate. So this is the unfortunate and very sad case of a premature baby who died because of this ventriculitis and choroid plexitis that was due to a bacterial infection. So this is one of the reasons why when um, uh, mothers-to-be are, are about to give birth, um, the OBGYNs will typically uh, do a, a whole bunch of um, testing for infectious type diseases in order to make sure that those uh, don't get passed on to the baby. And so uh, in this particular case, this was a uh, bacterium, a gram-negative rod, that uh, infected this baby and caused uh, this ventriculitis here and choroid plexitis here. Notice that in the brain parenchyma itself, um, that we don't see any indication of infection in the, in the parenchyma itself. Uh, there does seem to be a little bit of reactive tissue here, but for the most part in the, in the majority of the brain parenchyma, um, it, it doesn't have any sign of infection. It's just right along the ventricular walls here. So this is one of the major reasons why it's important to get prenatal care so that um, babies don't get this as uh, what happened in this unfortunate case. Okay, so um, please join us next time on Adventures in Neuropathology. Thank you.